Hello, everybody. Stacey Campbell here from Shiloh Global. And today, Shiloh Global and the healing rooms of the Santa Maria Valley are bringing to you the what the spirit is saying to the church. Now, I am really excited about today's program because we have two uh, people that their primary ministry is not on in church on Sunday morning. It's not... Um, uh, you know, in the evening, it's actually in the workplace. This is where they advance the kingdom of God. And everything they learn on Sunday, uh, according to Ephesians 4, where they come to church, they are equipped to leave the church to go do the work of ministry in their sphere of influence. And today we have an incredible story of what this actually looks like Monday to Friday. And so I have two wonderful women, Nira Tanaku, I hope I pronounced that right, and Lynn Hermajatu. Did I pronounce that right? All right. Oh, close. Yeah. You can like, I, I, I <laughs> always call you by your first name, so I never uh, uh, say your last names because as you can see, I can't pronounce it correctly, but you can uh, fix that in a minute. But we have a, a, an amazing story of A, how you met, and B, how Nira, who was a believer first, who was a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, uh, met Lynn and the story of how this all happened in the workplace. And so Nira, you really are the star of this show because you are uh, what we would call in uh, church growth or whatever, uh, uh, an early adapter. <clears throat> you got this message, you know, from the Lord and you are one of those ones that just read the Bible and went out and did it. You didn't do your ministry only on Sunday morning. You didn't do your ministry only in a Bible study. You actually read the word of God and discovered that all ministry is 24 seven actually. So Nira, can you pronounce your name correctly? Tell me, who are you? Where do you come from? What do you do? Just a little bit of your background and how long you've been a, a Christian things like that. And then we'll go to Lynn after that. Okay. Um, hi, Stacy, And hi, everyone from the Shiloh uh, ministry. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It's a, really an honor for me to be here tonight, uh, to be here uh, tonight because I'm in Singapore. My name is Nira Tanoko. Uh, I was uh, Indonesian. I was born in Indonesia, but uh, I grew up in Singapore for uh, most of my life. I am Singaporean today. Um, um, I, I am a private banker. I, I manage a team of bankers. Uh, I have like 11 people in my team. Uh, um, you know, we, we manage wealth and we manage a book of north of $2 billion, uh, you know, and um, so I've been a banker for 20 over years. And um, yeah, and that's where I, you know, met uh, Lynn 15 years ago. Wow, a long time ago. And yeah. uh, I understand that you used to work for, in the same bank as Lynn, but in different departments. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, we actually work in the same bank. It was a city bank, city private bank. Uh, we were in the same department, but you know, we kind of like uh, never spoke. You know, we uh, kind of like uh, we were quite different, uh, and all that, and all that. You know, we were just uh, colleagues. Uh, but uh, maybe we should let Lynn exactly. introduce herself. Yeah. Okay. So First, Lynn, who are you? Where do you come from? Uh, Stacy, thank you so much for the invite. I'm so stoked about this conversation because I don't recall you ever having two Asian women on your platform ever. I think this is the first. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that, you know, the, the kingdom of God is advancing so much in Asia. The Asia is actually becoming a forefront of, of uh, world affairs. And it is so important that we have Asians on the program because God is moving massively in Asia. So I'm, I'm just as stoked. Amen. Uh, so my name is Lynn Hermijanto. You got it 95% correct, uh, uh, but you never call me by my last name anyway. I, my dad's Indonesian, but I'm born and raised in Singapore. And uh, I have made a living most of my life as a banker and investor. Um, I met Nira at City, and it's funny, she said that, um, yeah, we were in the same department, same bank, but we were, uh, I think we led very different lives. 
And she was the first Christian friend that I got to know uh, in my line of work. I made it a point to never hang out with Christians because I thought they would make me feel bad about the decisions I made or, or how I led my life. And so in fact, when I found out that Nira was a Christian, I told her that you, uh, we can be friends, but you cannot talk to me about Jesus Christ. Wow. I mean, you yeah. were, you actually avoided Christians. And then when she uh, you got, you got to know each other, you told her she couldn't even talk about Jesus. That's pretty bold. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt at that time, I guess I was a Christian when I was 16 and I fell away and I decided it was just not my cup of tea. And I never wanted anything uh, to, to do with it. And, um, and so, but what was amazing, I think in my friendship with Nira actually, you know, we were just colleagues then, was that she asked me some very intelligent questions that really got me thinking about life. And at that point when she knew me, I was very into meditation. I was very uh, into new age philosophy. I think I shared with you, Stacy, that I actually uh, majored in Islamic studies in university. So I would explore other avenues of faith, but never just, but never Christianity. Um, but I saw that Nira had something different. She had different perspective. She had a different heart. And it really got me asking, you know, so she, we made a deal. She'll never talk about Jesus, but I could ask her all the hard questions like, how does she know her God is real? How does she know her God is good? And, and that was, that was really the beginning of the friendship between us. Wow. Now, Nira, how on right. earth did you ever meet a person that's actually trying to avoid Christians, trying to avoid you? What happened in your life and how did you express your faith in the workplace? Okay, um, you know, I was a relatively young Christian then, but I really wanted, um, you know, to do something for God because God had been so good to me and I had never experienced love like that, uh, you know, so I felt that, you know, I, I just wanted to do something, you know, I just wanted to serve him. And that, you know, and I asked him for an opportunity for me to serve him, even at my work, uh, in my workplace, you know, if, you know, in whatever way that I could. So, and, you know, and God is a God who always answers our prayers. So, you know, and it was funny because uh, we, we had an offsite in Bangkok and that, um, you know, so I, I, I told God, you know, and you know, during these three days, if you could show me someone whom I can share my faith with, or like, you know, whom I can strike a conversation with, you know, I, I like to just to do something to, as an expression of my faith. I was, I was a young Christian, but I was very hungry for God. And I wanted to hear the Holy Spirit and wanted to know what it was like to be led by the Holy Spirit. I wanted to uh, understand the voice of the Spirit uh, because I believe that, you know, the more you respond to the Spirit's leading, the more acquainted you are to his voice and his way. So uh, that was my prayer. And it was, it was, it was funny because, you know, I, I, I sort of like, um, you know, in my heart, I was thinking I could um, share my faith and I could speak with anyone except this particular girl. Uh, Lynn, okay, because I felt that, you know, she was a bit aloof and quite intimidating and that, you know, and I just sensed that, you know, maybe she, she didn't like me and that we were very, very different. And of course, Lynn was a, uh, a super producer. She was a super banker. Even then, she was extremely successful, you know, so it was like really intimidating for me. But, you know, it was funny. So I thought that, you know, God would lead me to someone that, you know, I was comfortable with. But, you know, I just sensed in my spirit that it was Lynn, you know, and, and it was, it's funny. And so there was one day where everyone was out on like, you know, cycling on like activities, you know, um, but, you know, I chose not to um, go out. So I just to hang around the hotel and that, you know, I was walking around and I was looking for a cafe to sit down and that lo and behold, and that, you know, when I went to that cafe, which is a very, very tiny cafe, there was only one person there, and that was Lynn. And she was sitting there with her book. And there was no 
um, any other table that was available. There was no any other, you know, other than the chair that is next to her. So, you know, so I sat down, you know, because I was there and then, you know, and it was strange and that, uh, and I was quite nervous, but, you know, and, you know, and then Lynn suddenly turned to me, or she didn't even turn to me. She, she started saying, she started asking me, do you believe in, before even she completed her sentence, I completed it for her. I said, destiny. Then she said, yes, destiny. Because I somehow knew that would be the topic that she would be asking me about destiny. And that was an opportunity for me to strike a conversation with her. And that was the beginning of everything. Wow. Me. So Lynn yeah. trying to avoid Christians and you are praying. So Lord, who do you want me to talk to? <laughs> you're actually having this conversation with God and God is leading you to Lynn, the last person at your workplace that you would normally talk to. And yeah. He sets it all up and she asks you, like, what a profound question for a perfect stranger to say, do you exactly. say yes to me? Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So how did your first conversation go? Was it awkward or? Uh, no, it was not awkward. It was uh, pretty natural, but, you know, um, but I knew I was not, um, I, I, I didn't have a lot of expectation out of it. It was just quite natural. And that, you know, we had a nice conversation, actually, so that, uh, you know, when we flew back to Singapore, I even like sat next to her in the plane and that we continued our conversation. So that was the beginning of our friendship. But I realized that we were also very different in terms of uh, in, in many ways, in lifestyle, in, in uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that, um, you know, so it was uh, it was not also a natural friendship. Uh, at least at that point of time. Um, but, uh, you know, so as we started talking and all that, and of course, Lynn knew that I, I was a Christian and, and, and all that, and that, you know, like what Lynn said, Lynn told me, Nira, we are friends. We can talk about anything except Jesus Christ. Wow. The moment you speak about Jesus Christ, this friendship is over. Wow. And I, then I said, okay, not an issue, no problem at all. You know, because, you know, for me, because I believe that, you know, if God led me to learn and God would show me the way and that the Holy Spirit would show me ways to get to her heart. And I, 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 I you know, I, I did not need to, you know, even start talking about it. I believe that the way God opened up this whole conversation, he would continue it. You know, I just, you know, I was just. You know, I was just, uh, you know, a young Christian. I was really hungry for God. And I believe in the word of God because when God started something, when God starts something, he will just complete it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, and, and one conversation leading to another. And I remember last time, uh, of course, we didn't have, you know, it, you know, we had what we call, what was that, Lynn? Uh, um, you know, the, is, sorry, yeah. is it MSN? It's, it's yeah. like, um, yeah. It's like a messaging uh, thing, you know, and that so at night, sometimes we would log in and then we would message and she would always ask me this question. Is the God of Nira, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? And I said, yes. And he is Jesus. And then with that answer, she would log off. <laughs> and and. And, and this happened, believe me, this happened like a few times and over a few nights. And she would always end with, is the God of Mira, the God of, uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I said, yes, and his name is Jesus. And she would sign off. Wow. So, Liz, it's, now we got to get it a little bit into your background. How, so this is all happening. You met at work. Uh, you're praying at work. So what I love about this story is it all takes place in the workplace in a natural place where you're you see each other regularly and um you have these conversations but what made you so hard Lynn what made you so uh I don't want to talk about Jesus what made you like that I think because I I gave myself to Jesus when I was 16 and then I felt that I couldn't feel God after a while and then I decided that this this um this uh 
this uh, faith was just not for me. I was very open to uh, spiritual pursuits. I was open to any other gods, but I figured maybe the God of, of Jesus Christ just wasn't right for me. Uh, that was my mindset. And, you know, I'll tell you, I think what happened with um, Nir and I, I think, you know, it was a very natural um, trusting, I think a trusting friendship was, you know, was really taking place and she was genuine about it. I think this is key. It wasn't like she was friendly with me because she had a target to, to, to fail. I, it didn't feel like that at all for me. Um, the entire time, I think um, that, you know, she was trying to, you know, uh, trying to, to, to share about life with me. I was also trying to get her out of the Christian faith because I thought she needed rescue as well, just as much as she thought I needed rescue. Um, and I asked her hard questions too. And I, what I appreciated about our, our friendship was that she'll tell me that there are things that she just, she just doesn't have answers for, like what happened to the dinosaurs, for example? Does she believe in evolution? What does that mean for her? How, does it contradict the Christian faith? If God was good, why was there evil today on earth? And, and there were times where she could give me answers and there were times where she said, I'm sorry, I don't know, but it doesn't, she said to her, it doesn't change anything. And one of the things that struck me over this period of time that lasted, I don't know, it was like maybe two years. So I think I was the hardest case, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, it, it, this spanned on for two years. So it's two years of conversations, conversations about, uh, you know, is God good? You know, about Jesus Christ. Well, why did he have to die on the cross? Like really fundamental questions that I had. And and what I appreciated about a friendship was not only was she genuine, I think she was very, I think, honest uh, with me and and very patient. And I and I really thank God for that. And I'll tell you that she asked me two profound questions that really shifted my perspective. And the first question, I, I don't know whether Neva rem remembers this, was when she asked me, so Lynn, so who is Lynn? Like, who is Lynn? And I told her everything that I'm proud of, my accomplishments, where I schooled, where I work. And, and I remembered her looking at me and shrugging her shoulders and saying, but that's where you work and that's where you live and that's where you school. That's not who you are. And I remembered getting, I was a little ticked off with that, with that reply. And I said, okay, if Nira, you're so smart. Why don't you, you, you have the model answer. Why don't you tell me who Nira is? And without even batting an eyelid, she said, I'm Nira, um, I'm, I'm the daughter of God, and I'm greatly loved by him and by the people that he's placed around my life. And I th that just blew my mind. I mean, because it really, it was a truth that really resonated with me, but I've never heard anyone say this to me, like in my face. And so I remembered, I went home that day and I, I jotted this down in my journal that Nira had something that I don't know anyone else has. Like she has got a she has got a perspective that is different. She's got some answers that are different to to those that I'm accustomed to, and and that I I, I jotted down in my diary that I I need to I need to uh, pick a brain and a heart a little more on this matter. Hmm. And so that was the first question, and 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 the second question that she she, um, uh, I would say, challenged me with was when I invited her to my home and I have uh, a, a large library, a collection of books. And I studied um, Islam and I was very into religious studies. And, and I remember sharing some of my um, uh, books and even notes to Nira. And I said, check this out, you know, and check out the grade that I was very proud of, 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 the, uh, of the papers I've written about, about uh, the Islamic faith. And she said, wow, Lynn, so can you tell me, you read so much, you studied so much, can you tell me about your God? And I looked at her and I was quite offended with that question. And I said, Nira, maybe it'll take me many lifetimes to know this God, because at that point in time, I, uh, I entertained the, 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 um, the philosophy of reincarnation and things like that. And I remember Nira laughing and she shrugged her shoulders again. And she said, well, that's too bad because I know my God and he's good and he's kind. And that really affected me. I'm like, what? 
you know, like I've done all this studying and I truly, I couldn't answer that question. And there's this person in front of me that has so much certainty of the God that she has, that loves her, that protects her. It is amazing. So that, 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 that really uh, struck uh, a chord. No, I'm hearing you say that not only was Nira at work uh, uh, consistent, like she, you saw an integrity in her lifestyle every time you met her, but she was, uh, uh, she understood, she literally, the Bible says, uh, and they knew their God and did, did exploits, you know, in Daniel chapter 12. And you could tell that she knew God just by her answers, by how she lived. And there was an integrity in her lifestyle, Monday to Friday. It wasn't a church appearance, you know, with a, chef, a church face she put on on Sunday, but she literally lived out her faith and, and had a real relationship with Jesus that was different and unique than anything you'd ever watched somebody do. Absolutely. I was never invited to church. I did not step into the church before I said the salvation prayer with her. You know, it was just um, really a journey based on the conversations we've had and just watching, I think, how she do life, you know, and having respect for the, the way that she does life. That made me think, okay, she's got something good and I want that, that goodness. Yeah. Now, I, I do want to kind of go back a little bit, Lynn, and you said, you know, you tried it, quote unquote, uh, and it didn't work for you, as it were. You didn't feel any different. You know, you invited Jesus into your life at some point, but it didn't feel any different, and you couldn't tell if God was there or not. Um, is, is that accurate? What, what, what was the big disappointment that made you a hard against Christianity? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think at 16, I experienced really the power of the Holy Spirit, um, Stacy. but uh, I wasn't grounded in the Word of God. So a lot of my experience was very, was very feeling based. So, you know, those were the times where, you know, when I prayed, my hands would tremble and I'll feel the heat of God upon my life. And then months later, when I had questions, uh, you know, uh, on the faith, I, I really didn't have someone that I could communicate and dialogue with. And then I didn't have these experiences to rely on anymore. Then I didn't feel, I started to ask myself, was it a figment of my imagination in terms of the experiences and the visions I had? Or was it really God? And I concluded after a year that it has to be a figment of my imagination and this wasn't the real deal. And so that's when my heart really went cold on Christianity. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, you're, uh, you're a very logical person. I, I, that's probably a key to your success at your workplace. But that kind of logic is uh, it can is brings up questions that many, many, many people have. And when they can't find answers to those questions, you know, even if they've had an experience, but some people get very disappointed because a they have no experience and they have these questions. And nobody talks about the really tough questions at, at, at church or wherever they're learning about their faith and they don't have answers for them. So Nira, talk to me. How did you know these answers and how did you dialogue with all those hard questions being bombarded at you every time you met? What, how did you deal with that? Uh, that's, that's a good question, uh, Stacy. Actually, I would attribute that to the wisdom of God. It's really, I, you know, I, if I look back, when I look back, I, I'm amazed, you know, I feel amazed at how God had led me through uh, those years and the questions that Lynn had for me, because I can tell you, I wouldn't have known many of the answers that, you know, that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, the question, would be, uh, the question that she posed to me. So, um, you know, it's, Really, really, I, I would attribute it to the wisdom of God, uh, you know, because uh, the thing about Lynn is that when she said, Nira, we can be friends, but the moment you speak about Jesus Christ, we are no longer friends. I knew that she meant it. And because of that, I wanted to respect that. And I wanted to respect, uh, you know, you know, it's, yeah, I wanted to respect, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that thing. And, and, you know, so I told myself, I, I, I should not 
talk to her about Jesus unless she initiated it, right? So, uh, you know, so what I did was I asked her questions about her faith, like, you know, things that she believed in. I remember, um, you know, one of the many things that she was very keen on was, uh, was it uh, Lynn Willing Devishes? It's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a Turkish, um, it's a, it's a Turkey religion, you know, you know, Berlin we have, Dervishes. yes, I, yeah, I, Berlin I, have, it, I have it in my yeah, yeah. prophecy, yeah, yeah, an Islamic, yeah. Um, basically ex, uh, ecstatic form of prophecy with the Islamic spirit where they, you know, right. begin to turn and move and create, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. And, by a spirit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that we had a conversation about that. So I asked her, "What is it that you liked about that? What, 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 what does it signify? You know, and that you know." So I and I, I just asked her questions and I challenged her. And even if you had wanted to be one of them, is is there a place for you? Because I see that they're all men. You know. So you know, I I, I just asked her questions like that. You know. So. Is, is there a place for a woman, for example, in this faith, you know? Um, you know, so I just, I just, uh, I, I kept asking her questions, you know, I think maybe I irritated her a bit, you know? Yeah, so. <laughs> so, you know, I think uh, I, I, until one day, you know, I never spoke to her about Jesus at all, but one day I was actually going to a, uh, a big prayer meeting and, um, you know, and um, I, I, so I just, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I just asked her, hey, hey, do you want to come with me to this prayer meeting? It's, it's a prayer meeting. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's big. It's in the stadium. It's not anything too personal. You know, if you like, you can just come with me. And to my surprise, she actually said, yes, you know, I'd like to come. And this prayer meeting is basically to pray for the nation, to pray for Singapore. So, you know, so we went together and that, you know, and I think she sat through uh, the entire uh, prayer meeting. And then at the end of the prayer meeting, when we walked back to the car and in the car park, in the car, because I was about to give her a lift back home in the car, she asked me, are you going to ask me whether I want to receive Jesus Christ or not? I was so surprised. I, I said, what? So she repeated the question, are you going to ask me whether I want to receive Jesus Christ or not? Then I just asked her, would you like to receive Jesus? Then she said, yes. Wow. And I led her in the sinner's prayer in the car park there and then. You know, for the life of me, I could never, I would never have connected the dot, meaning that it was a prayer meeting. It was a general prayer meeting. It's got nothing to do with her. It's like, it's, it's praying for the nation. And she was just like, you know, observing and I, I, I do know what happened. And then at the end of that prayer meeting, suddenly she asked me and she said, are you going to uh, ask me whether I want to receive Jesus or not? I said, okay, are you going to receive Jesus? She said, yes, it was a miracle. Actually, Nira, before that, you had challenged me on something and that was really- Oh key. yeah, that's I, right, that's right. That's a very important point. Interesting, um, And so if I could share the, the I remembered, um, I, you know, me sharing with you that I said, okay, so if you, so this is after two years, Stacy, and I said, okay, if your God is good and, and your God is real, I want to experience him. And I want to, I want to know him like on my turf. Like, I don't want to know him when I'm hurting or when I'm like sick or needy. I want to know him when I'm well, and I want to experience him. And I want to know that this God is real. And you said to me, she said, just pray and it is done. You said that to me, Nira. You said that. Yes, yes, I remember that. that. God can be tested in this, in this, it, for his goodness. And all you need to do is, is pray for him to, 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 uh, to come. And your only instruction to me was, Lynn, you pray to so many gods. So when you pray, just be specific that you're praying to the God of Jesus Christ. And I remembered uh, one evening putting this to a test, Stacey. So I knelt uh, by my bed because I figured that's what Christians do. And I said to the God of Abraham, Isaac, David, Joseph, 
Jesus Christ as well as Nira Tanoka, just to make sure that I covered everyone I needed to cover. And I said, God, if you are real, I would like to know that you're real. And I like to experience that you're real. And I had the most supernatural divine experience. And I felt the love of God blanket over me. And it made me just cry. And I cried myself to sleep. And, you know, my personality, and I think that the, the Lynn that Nira knew me then, I was a tough cookie. I don't cry and I don't break under pressure. But I cried myself to sleep. And I woke up the next day. And the first thing that came to mind was, okay, I must be really stressed. I don't know what happened. I don't know why I cried myself to sleep. And I really didn't, I did not think much of this experience. I came back to Singapore. I was in Jakarta and I came back to Singapore. I didn't tell Nira about this, but several days later, I tried it again. I figured if God was really good, he'll give me a second chance. So I tried it again and I had the exact same experience. I felt the love of God wrap around me. It was, and I knew when I experienced it the second time that there was no turning back, that this God, I cannot deny that he is good, he's real, and he's enabling me to understand and experience him in a measure that only I could understand. And I told her that, you know, this is it. I cannot turn back from what I just experienced and that God is love. Wow. That's really amazing because you experienced the love of God. Even after all these questions, you experienced the power of the Holy Spirit at 16, but it didn't answer all the big questions, but the love of God really turned your heart when you were specific. And Nira, you also said earlier that you had an encounter with the love of God that brought you to self. What was your experience? Right. Um, I came to know the Lord when, you know, in, in 1998. So that was a long time ago. That was like a, a, yeah, 20 over years ago. And um, so that was the time when I kind of like lost everything in my life. I lost, uh, you know, my long-term relationship. I lost um, and I was in debt uh, and I was addicted to gambling. I was in a very, very bad place. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I was suicidal. I attempted suicide, and you know, and and I was greatly, greatly, greatly in debt, and I had no one to turn to, and that you know, and one day, you know, I just remember, you know, that you know that there was a church in this particular place, so I just walked into that church, and that you know, and in in that service, uh, the pastor. Uh, actually preach uh, from the book of Malachi, you know, about finances, about honoring God with your uh, tithes and offerings and that, you know, and I was so blown away by that message because, you know, and although that message in Malachi is like, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it was so direct, like, you know, basically God challenging us that, you know, you can test him, you know, and all this while you've been robbing him, you know, because you don't uh, uh, give back to him, you don't acknowledge him. And it was a very strong, hard message, but it, I felt that it was for me. And I gave my life to Christ uh, on that day. And I decided that I wanted to test God, you know, and I wanted to, okay, I had nothing to lose. So, you know, from then on, I just wanted to do the things that, you know, the Bible said uh, to do. And that anyway, there was no downside risk for me. And that for me, it turned out to be like, the most wonderful uh, experience, you know, I've ever had in my life, you know, I experienced really the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the grace of God, you know, just to cut the story short, you know, God really healed me inside out and that, uh, you know, I, and, and I received the tongue of the Holy Spirit and I was set free from my addiction and it is not, I, 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 it's not like a few years, it is almost instantaneous and that, you know, and, and I would pray in tongue every day, like for an hour, you know, for a period of time. And, and that, you know, and, and God just broke, uh, broke me free from my addiction in, in gambling and that, you know, and, uh, and I was debt free within a few years and I was able to even buy my first property and that, you know, and, uh, you know, and I, I'm just, I was just so touched by the kindness and the generosity of God because, you know, uh, a person like me, you know, I, I was, um, you know, in a financial rut. I 
then I could not be trusted with finances, but God restored me. And not only God restored me, God made me a, you know, a, a good steward of my own money and a steward of other people's money. Because today I'm a banker, you know, I, I, I manage people's money, you know, and it's amazing. Only God could restore what the locusts have eaten away. And, and because of this, you know, I, I just, you know, for the lack of better words, you know, I, I, I just, I, I owe it to God. You know, I ascribe all glory and greatness to God. And, you know, everything is a bonus in my life because he's so kind, he's so good. And that is, it's, it's just so amazing. Whenever I think of, of, of this episode in my life, I'm just reminded of like how kind and how merciful and how gracious God is. And that, and because of this, you know, I just want uh, the people around me to know him and to know his love. Wow, that's really beautiful and yeah. shocking. You got saved on a tithing message. You know, sometimes people criticize, oh, all the church wants is your money. No, it has nothing to do with that. No. It's, it's the Bible. God wants your heart and where your treasure is, there your heart is also. But God wants to actually bless you at, at, with the understanding of finances and stewardship that your blessing becomes a blessing to others and your whole life is a testimony of that and I love it when the truth of the Bible is put into daily life it always works it always has good fruit so that's incredible so just um, you know for people that are listening in uh, and they have jobs and they go into work Nira, what do you do even today, 15 years later, your zeal is unabated. You are uh, still loving and serving God with all the, the zeal of, of first love. What do you tell them? How, how do they, what, what's the biggest thing that you would tell them when they go to work? Not when they're in church or in a Bible study or someplace else, when they're at work outside of their, uh, where they've been equipped, what what's the biggest thing at work that they need to know and be be listening for okay for me i think you know god is so real and that you know and the holy spirit is real and that just um you know now today i manage a team of uh bankers and you know and i love what i'm doing because it gives me every opportunity for me to speak life to them to counsel them to hear them, to give them a listening ear, and that you know, and and you know, it's it, it's 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 you know, I I I take everything every day is an opportunity for me to preach Christ with my action, and that you know, even with my advice to them, with my counsel, and that you know, I just give you an example like um, uh, two days ago. So I you know I. I just sensed that one of my bankers, he was like, kind of like down, like very, very down. And I felt it in my spirit as he was seated next to me. And then in my heart, I just said a prayer for him, for his spirit to be lifted up. And that I knew that he's going through a, like some confusion in his life, you know, and that where he is and all that. And that, you know, so it's, to me, it's so, it's such a great honor for me to be in this place you know, not just to be a, uh, you know, to be a, a, a leader, you know, in, in terms of title, but it's really, really also to impact on their lives. And that, you know, and yesterday um, I had a, 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 a meeting, for example, as well with um, uh, the board of the bank and uh, all the important people uh, because I needed to do a presentation. So before I went to that meeting, I actually prayed, you know, to God, for his wisdom, for his, uh, uh, you know, for his boldness and that for clarity of mind. And, that, and God is so real because, you know, I just felt that his spirit uh, went ahead before me and that to prepare the way and that when it was time for me to present, you know, I, I, I just felt a surge of confidence, a supernatural confidence, you know, and that and I had so much clarity and I was able to present it uh, uh, you know, within a short period of time, and that you know, and and at the end of it, you know, the board actually approved. So it was like you know, it's things like that. You know, you you may think that you know, um, 
you know, it is it is not just about evangelism because evangelism is not just limited to sharing John three sixteen because evangelism is about everything. It's about you know, it's your personal life. It's about being authentic at work. It's showing your integrity. It's about you know. Uh, being a good co-worker, being a good worker, having that spirit of excellence in your work and that, you know, and you can bring God everywhere, anywhere you go and that, you know, because God is so real, because the Holy Spirit is in us, just like, you know, his word in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, we have the Holy One, we have the Holy Spirit in us, so we know all truth and that really, because that is what differentiates us from uh, 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 non-believers because if our response is the same as non-believers then really then there is no uh, difference right because you know we, we must ask ourselves you know how do we respond as a believer how do we respond you know do we respond out of fear or out of faith do we respond out of um, anxiety or chaos or out of peace right because really we have been empowered and the Holy Spirit lives in us. So for me, I'm really excited whenever I go to work, you know, when I go to work every day, because it is an opportunity for me to live out uh, my Christ-centered life. And, you know, and I'm confident not because of my own ability, but because I know that, you know, the Holy Spirit is real in my life. Wow, that's incredible. And, uh, you know, the... And I, I loved your examples because it's not about performance and it's not just about evangelism. It's a, it's a lifestyle where you, you yeah. see the next you. It, you. You leave the 99, you go to the one. Sometimes you go to the 99. Sometimes you go to the board. Sometimes it's just about one person, but it's living Christ, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit every single day and only doing the things that you see your father do. It's beautiful. So I would like you, Nira, to pray, and then I'd like you to pray, Lynn, for anybody listening that just needs, you know, uh, they're maybe shy, they're maybe quiet, they're maybe afraid to speak up at work, for that boldness to just be authentic in Jesus mm -hmm. every day. And, um, uh, and then, Lynn, I'd like you to come on and say, what is the secret for your you know, your success in the workplace, what would you say the primary thing and pray for an impartation for that? Start with Nir. Okay. All right, so uh, so I'll, I'll pray for, you know, all of you and whoever needs to pray. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for this time. Indeed, Father, your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us. Father, we know and we know and we know that you are here even, even among us. Father, we know that you are a good, good father and we are so, so loved by you. And that Lord, that you know, even as you have been so real in my life, you have been so real in my life, I pray, Father, that each one of us, every one of us that is on this call, they will experience the reality of your presence and the reality of your power wherever they are, even at their workplace. And that Lord, because indeed father that you have a great purpose for every one of them and that they are created for your purpose every one of them and that father we just want to speak your boldness your courage upon every one of them and that lord and that uh, that, uh, that as we ask for your spirit of wisdom to be at work among everyone upon every one of them and that lord and i pray for every opportunity for them to actually display this Faith and this power that is uh, uh, that is from the Holy Spirit. So, Father, bless every one of them here uh, 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 tonight or this morning, and that Lord and I pray for Your presence to go before them, and that Lord and I pray that they will experience Your wonder and Your miracles, uh, Your supernatural like never ever before. Open their eyes, open the eyes of their heart, that they be enlightened that they will know and know that you are with them. You will never leave them, nor forsake them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And Lynn? Uh, you wanted me to pray, right? Was it? Yes. Just... And also, would you say there's one thing in your life that either you do consistently to maintain relationship with the Lord or uh, that helps you at work? What, 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 what is it that you 
that brings success to your daily life? You know, I, I, I must say that one of the things, one of the key things that keep me centered, uh, centered in my faith and I think focused in, 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 in whatever that life can bring is the constant meditation and experience of the goodness of God and the love of God to really understand just how deeply, immensely loved we are, that indeed we are who he says we are and that he is the God who says that he is, we come into alignment of that. And that has really, I think, been the anchor in my life. And, and I would say, even with regards to success at work, it's just believing that you serve a God who loves you, a God who is for you and not against you, and that you have a bright future in him. It's just coming back into the alignment of God. So I did everything that I did not do when I was 16. Wow, that's awesome. Can you pray? for people to maintain that focus, people that are listening, that are believers, and also uh, even for unbelievers that might be listening to this program that maybe don't know Jesus yet, that maybe haven't experienced the love of God, that have those hard questions, that they would come to know that God is real and that he loves them. Yes. So Father, I thank you for this opportunity and I just want to take this time to bless every person listening in and tuning in and I pray that God, that everyone listening in will experience just the extravagance of your love, the depth, the width, the immensity and the ferocity of your love in your lives. Just as I had encountered your love and I understood you as a God who's good and a God who's real. Father, I pray for every opportunity, for every person listening in and their family to come to know this great love in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that, Lord, that, that your love will shake them to the core. Your love rewrote my life and my destiny. And Father, I pray and declare your love breaking chains, your love setting people free, and your love bringing healing and restoration to every area that the devil has taken and stolen in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for the believers tuning in. I I pray that, Lord, that they will understand that you have called them to be uh, 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 people of success, people of substance. And I pray that, Lord, that you will establish the work of their hands, that, Lord, that you will make them the head and not the tail, the top and not the bottom of everything that they do. And I pray that their lives will, will point arrows to you, Jesus, and that, Lord, that we would all be such good stewards of everything you have placed in our hands, that everyone will see and acknowledge that, indeed, that we belong to you and that we are your disciples. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Now we can see Asia rising. Uh, Wesley just did a program. For those of you who haven't seen them, you can download our free Shiloh Global app and you can listen to what the Spirit is saying series or the conversion series. But Wesley just did a program uh, with a woman that is a missionary leading in the 1040 window, uh, leading many, many people to Jesus in India in particular and the Northeast India. And, um, but we can see that Asia is rising and now we can see why the integrity, the closeness with the Holy Spirit. And it is awesome. I know Lynn that you work for empowering women uh, organizations and forums also in Asia. So this is a beautiful thing to see what God is doing all over the world. And really the love of God is manifest everywhere in the workplace, in uh, by your side of the bed when you're just praying and you're even asking if he's real god is actually real and he's actually there for you so i just encourage you to pray to jesus christ because he is there to hear your prayers uh, also please uh, download our free shallow globe app as i said and listen to the many programs we have on this subject and how people came to know Christ in the conversion series. It's just amazing the different stories of how God has led every single person so individually because he doesn't just care for the masses. He cares for every person. He cares for you. Thank you everyone for listening to the Shiloh Global Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to help us continue to make these great programs, we encourage you to donate at our website, Wesley Stacy Campbell. 
Also, check out Stacy Campbell's Shiloh Company Prophetic Mentorship, where you can be mentored in the prophetic by Stacy herself. Download our free Shiloh Global app available on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. On the app, you can hear more programs not listed on the Charisma Podcast Network. And finally, if you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes, the Charisma Podcast Network, or wherever you listen to podcasts.